Okay, welcome back. We're in Module 4, Working with Customers and Jobs, and this is Part 2 of Section 1. Now, I wanted to go ahead and show you how to add a new customer and then a job for that customer. All you're going to do is you're going to go to the top left of the Customer Information window, and you're going to click New Customer and Job. And here's where you add new customers, jobs, or multiple customers and jobs at the same time. So we're going to click on New Customer. Now we're going to put in our customer's name. Let's say that it's Tom Allen. And it really doesn't matter if you do last name, comma, first name, or vice versa, but be consistent with how you do it so your whole list looks the same. The next thing you're going to see is a place to put the opening balance. Now what this is designed for is, as of the start date of your company, how much money did this customer owe you? Now let's say it was $1,000. You could put that number here and his account would be correct, but then you wouldn't know that that $1,000 was really a combination of a couple of different invoices. So I prefer to actually go set up those invoices separately and leave this blank right here. Now you can see we're on the Address Info tab, and this is where you're going to put in information like the customer's company that he works for. You're going to put in information like Mr. or Mrs., first and last name. So we said it was Tom Allen. Now here's a common question that comes up at this point. If I've got his name at the top here, why do I need his name here? You're going to learn in a later module how to actually do mail merges with Microsoft Word. And when you do a mail merge, it pulls from these fields here. It does not pull from this. That's just to put his name in the list. So you want as many of these fields filled in as possible so that it will pull when you do those merges. Now I can also put in his job title, phone fax, email, website, things like that. And if I want any of these fields to represent something different, I just choose it from the list. Now you might have noticed that as you're typing here, it started filling in this invoice bill to information. You're going to have to actually click down here and type in what you want the billing address to be. It's not going to know that, so you're going to have to type it in. Now over on the right, you can put in the shipping address. So if your customer likes the bills to go to one address, but maybe the item shipped to a separate address, that's when you fill this in. But if you don't have that situation, you don't need to fill that in. All right, the next tab down is your payment settings. So a lot of these fields here are just informational. So if I give my customers account numbers, I have a field to plug that in. And also if I want specific terms for my customer, I can fill that in as well. There is a place for the preferred delivery method. So does this customer like to have things emailed or mailed to them? And also, do they usually like to pay you with a check, cash, visa, or MasterCard? And if you don't really know, you can just leave that blank. Now, I probably wouldn't put any of this information in here. This would be if your customer said to you, go ahead and keep my credit card number on file and charge it when I want to buy something. That's fine if they want to do that, but you don't want to keep it in QuickBooks because then if someone got into it, you'd be responsible for them getting that information. Now, if you want to set up a credit limit, you could over on the right. And what would happen if you did this is that once you created enough invoices to exceed the credit limit, QuickBooks would pop up and warn you and still let you create that invoice if you need to. Now, you can also create a price level. So if you've decided that all of your commercial customers automatically get a 10% discount, then you can set that up as what we call a price level. So the way you would do that is when you click Add New, you would name your price level. So you saw we had one called Commercial back there, but we could name it anything we want. And we would say use this price level to decrease by 10%. So what would happen is any time in this field here that it said Commercial, QuickBooks automatically knows this customer gets a 10% discount. Alright, I'm just going to take that out for now. Alright, also the customer can pay you online and if you want to let them do that, they can pay you through credit card or bank transfer. There would actually be a button on their invoice when you emailed it over to them that would let them click there to do this. Alright, the next tab over is your sales tax settings. And so what you're going to find here is that if you charge sales tax, this is where you can say the customer is taxable or not. And if they are taxable, which sales tax item do they get charged? 
Now we're actually going to be covering sales tax in a later module, so just kind of remember this for now. Okay, so now we have the additional info tab. So a couple of things here. If you have different types of customers and you need to keep a record of that, you can here. Also, if you have sales reps that work for your company, you can track the rep that works with this customer here. These fields that you see on the right, those are just informational fields that you create. So the way you create them is you click on Define Fields. And if you add a new one to add, you just type it at the bottom here. And then you check off if you need that field available for customers, vendors, and or employees, so you don't have to go in and type it three different times. Now the last tab is Job Info. So obviously we're setting up a customer here, not a job. But if it was, we could have a description for the job, a status, meaning is it awarded, is it pending, a start and end date, and also a projected end date. So that's what you have to tell it when you're setting up a customer. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK here. And now you'll see Tom Allen in the list. Now just so you'll know, when you set up new customers, for some reason it always puts them at the top of the list, not alphabetical. So you can click on this word name at the top of the column, and that resorts the list for you. OK, so pretty easy to set up a customer, right? Why don't we quickly set up a job for this customer? So you make sure you clicked on your customer. You go to New Customers and Job and add a job. Now let's call this one Kitchen Remodel. And then you would set up the opening balance if you're going to use that field and any other information you needed. Now typically the information doesn't change if it's for a job. So I'm going to click OK. And now you'll see that Kitchen Remodel is indented under Tom, so that's how you know it's a job for that customer. So you also have the ability to add multiple customers and jobs up here. So what would happen here is you would be able to come into this list and you can actually copy and paste from Excel if you had a lot of them to do here. Or if you wanted, you could actually look at this list, you could edit this list, anything you want to do from here. So that's kind of how that works. So I'm going to go ahead and click the X at the top and get out of that. And that's how you set up new customers and jobs. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move over to Section 2 and talk about estimates. And when we first get over there, I'll show you how to add a job for a customer without having to come back to this window. Hi, I'm Molly. Thanks for watching. If you need additional QuickBooks Pro training to help you effectively manage your small business, check out our complete training courses for QuickBooks Pro. Click the Learn More button on the left, and I'll see you next week with additional videos.